What's going on everybody, I'm Mike, and welcome to Bonsai Pop. If you like the color red, you are going to like Helsing. It is a canvas splattered with undead blood and shadow dripping with rock and roll and classical tunes. And from this pooling viscous concoction emerges one of the most iconic characters of all time, Arucado. A debonair vampire of devilish demeanor, Alucard sports a Victorian style long red duster encasing a charcoal suit and accessorized by white dueling gloves and a wide, floppy brimmed fedora. He's also literally the only person I've ever seen truly pull off a fedora. The story mainly follows his absolute raffle stomping of anything and everything that has the unfortunate luck to fall into his sights. He carries a massive pistol that's eventually supplemented by a secondary jet black pistol dubbed the Jackal, which he dual wields, shooting blessed explosive rounds at his prey. He's basically Vash the Stampede, but instead of trying to save anyone and everyone due to a hero complex, he's down to dance toe to toe with any foe and destroy them with Without mercy or a second thought, he's Vash the Vampede. Helsing is an anime that focuses more on being awesome than making you think, and I can vibe with that. I like sitting back and watching a stupidly OP character with overconfidence bordering on narcissism thrash everything in his wake shrouded in darkness and red contrast. And ironically, cockiness, obscure loyalties, and a lack of challenge leads Alucard to being anything but a generic protagonist. Anti-hero is a far more fitting term, which leaves a role for growth and development to his new vampiric fledgling, Sarah. Helsing is a story that needs no plot and can carry itself merely with fights and Alucard's addictively intoxicating character, yet offers far more if you're willing to dig into the blackness. So pull up a chair and pour yourself a chalice of AB negative. This is Helsing, the original Helsing. Let's get into it. Welcome to Bonsai Pop's Hellmouth, an entire month of the scariest, goriest, and most violent anime we can find to add to our collection. And I know many people think Helsing Ultimate is way better than the original, but I think they both deserve their own videos, don't you? And personally, I like the aesthetic of the original better, so my channel's to recover it first. However, if you would like to support us in our theme months like Hellmouth and Shonember, which is coming next month, and non-trending anime in general, please consider checking out our Patreon. It's really how you get the full Bonsai pop experience and adds an entire facet to the channel that you will miss otherwise. Anyway, let's get to the story. Helsing follows the aptly named Helsing Organization, a covert vampire hunting company that's bound by oath and duty to protect Great Britain and Her Majesty, the Queen. For a show that really just lets the backstory fall by the wayside, the characters have a lot of history between them and the setting. The Helsing Organization refers both to the Helsing family, a famous family of vampire hunters, and the acronym Helsing. Her Royal England legions of legitimate supernatural and immortal night guard. The organization is headquartered in Helsing Manor, the Helsing family home, and headed by Sir Integra Fairbrook Wingate's Helsing, the last of the Helsing family line. She is Alucard's master, making him the secret weapon and trump card of the organization. Basically, they send him after the enemies that would be too dangerous for humans, and he has never failed to hit his mark. The relationship between the two seems strained and ambiguous early on, but as we gain more backstory, it becomes clear that despite Alucard's nonchalant demeanor towards, well, everything, he actually respects and admires Integra a great deal and makes a point of showing Sarah just how strong and fearless his master is. But to truly understand Helsing, we need to back up a bit and just take a little look at the manga. Now, Volume 8 features flashbacks to the origin of the Helsing organization and Alucard. The whole shebang was started by Abraham von Helsing, and if that name rings a gong in your brainium, that's because von Helsing is one of the primary protagonists in Bram Stoker's famous novel, Dracula. And in the novel, Dracula is killed at the end. Sorry, spoilers, I, I guess. The anime instead diverts from this timeline and Dracula lives on, becoming a servant of the Helsing family who shackled away his power behind various levels of control art restriction. Integra's father then locked Dracula away beneath the manor, judging his power too extreme to be used frequently. And after 20 years of imprisonment, Integra opens the door to the chamber as a last resort before her uncle can kill her and claim the Helsing organization for himself, spilling her blood, which Dracula gobbles up like a tasty treat, gaining back his strength and destroying Integra's pursuers before pledging his loyalty to her and her family. He also reveals his new name, Alucard, which is just Dracula backwards, by the way. Interesting only because usually an Alucard is a son of Dracula, half vampire, etc., but here we are. The guy had 20 years of solitary confinement, and that was the best he could do. I mean, he's built for killing, not word puzzles, all right? Well, I guess technically Integra's father gave him the name, but he had 20 years to think of a new one, that's all I'm saying. So Alucard resurfaces after decades 
decades of imprisoned slumber becoming the last resort for the Helsing organization, fighting fire with fire, vampire with vampire. And that's what you get. Bam! This guy right here, head gone, shablammy, kicking through people, shooting them big guns. Blood spray. Oh, Alucard is amused. Give him that evil grip. Blam! Kicking ass. The anime takes place a bit after Alucard's reawakening in the midst of a mission for Integra. He fights a vicar vampire who's holding a police girl hostage. Not one to let his target get away or even trifle a thought about the girl's death, Alucard offers the police girl a choice. Die or join him. She obviously chooses the latter, resulting in Alucard literally exploding her lung to kill the vampire holding her, and then biting her, turning her into his fledgling vampire. The girl is Sarah Victoria, now the newest member of the Helsing organization and a brand new child of the night. And for those that don't know vampire lore or haven't googled it since Twilight came out, vampires that sire fledglings have a unique relationship. It's a mix between master and slave, student and teacher, and father and daughter relationships, resulting in an odd but interesting connection between between the two. Alucard is often quite demanding of Sarah, telling her what to do. She also looks to him for advice or how to act, and as time goes on, she becomes more and more entranced in his presence. She calls him master, and there's an entire scene where Alucard attempts to set her free, yet she chooses to remain bound to him, to be his fledgling, and feel compelled to obey him. On the other hand, she often doesn't. Alucard tells Sarah to drink blood, and she resists. He tells her to run away, and she stays. She often directly disobeys direct orders from him, making it seem like he cares about her decisions, allowing her to have free choice at all times despite having the ability to force her to do what he wants. And this shows two things, care and respect. Alucard is nonchalant about nearly everything. He wants an engaging fight and he wants interesting things to happen, but beyond that, it's basically just whatever goes, goes. He taunts and looks down on nearly everyone, yet there is a fervent and palpable respect for both Sarah and Integra. But why? What is it about these two women that he found worthy of saving? Twice throughout Helsing, we hear Alucard say the same words, I know you don't want to die tonight. Once when he saves Integra as a young girl, and once when he turns Sarah into a vampire, and that's no coincidence. These two scenes are vital to understanding Alucard, what makes him tick, why he chose these two women, and that's something worth dissecting. In Integra's case, she was about to be murdered by her uncle when Alucard saved her, and after destroying her uncle's men, he comes to Integra, slams her against the wall while saying, those souls who suffer the righteousness will know their eternal inheritance. AKA, you become my eternal slave girl, which Integra rebukes, saying she'd die before allowing any vampire to order her around. She will never give up, Naruto style. Alucard's actions were nothing but a test, and once she passed, taking in her response, he laughs and bows before her and offers his service. It's an interesting twist. Why is that response correct? What does it mean to Alucard? And what about Sarah? Now Sarah is about to be turned into a slave to the vicar vampire. He means to turn her, using her for his own pleasure, and despite eerily mind control -y abilities, she refuses, sleepily telling him she'll blow her own brains out. And that's when Alucard barges in, tells the girl he's going to have to kill her, and repeats the same line he said to Integra, I know you don't want to die tonight, and then asks if she wants to come with him. Then he says the most important line, the decision has to be made of your own free will, so make the choice. Not moments ago, Sarah was about to become a fledgling to another vampire. Now Alucard is offering her the death, or the exact same thing, but his fledgling instead. So what's really the difference in her predicament? The answer is choice. Perhaps the hardest choice we as humans have to make is to not give up, to fight despite impossible odds. And in both girls' situations, they're up against losing their freedom. Integra is gonna die from her uncle, or die to Alucard, she assumes, yet she chooses not to give up. And in Sarah's case, she can choose death or be turned by Alucard, and she chooses to be turned. These choices, the choices to fight on, to fight for what you personally want in the face of death, are the main influences that garner respect from Alucard. It's how he chooses who is worthy and who isn't. It's why he gives Sarah freedom and independence despite having control over her. She has earned his respect. She made the choice to fight when death was inevitable. It's why he says the decision must be of her free will. If he decided to kill her or decided to turn her, it wouldn't be the same in his eyes. But she exacted her choice in a hopeless situation, and that made all the difference. Alucard even accentuates this view when Integra tears open her own throat to get Carmilla's blood out of her body. This is yet another choice between free will, cut your throat, become a slave to Carmilla. Integra chooses to gamble her life, and Alucard sees that as the ultimate form of power, the power to fight death, to choose, to fight for your choice, even if it might kill you. Just listen to his words. Watch how Integra fares in battle. Integra tore through her own throat and chose to fight for her life. Giving in is what kills people. 
When you refuse to surrender with all your heart, only then do you transcend your humanity, even in the face of death never give up. Alucard is fixated on this idea of choice, on a hopeless decision and following through with it, fighting for your choice no matter what. It's not entirely clear why he has this fascination, this obsession with choice. Alucard's history isn't clear either, we don't know how he became a vampire, but he is known as a true vampire, which means no one sired him. He didn't have a choice between death and becoming a vampire, however in many stories of Dracula it's often hinted that he turned himself into a vampire using black magic. If this is true for Helsing's Alucard, then he also chose freedom and respects those who did the same, but I kind of doubt that that's the case. You see, a vampire is a cursed being damned to eternal life in the darkness, deriving sustenance only from the living, intelligent, and emotional humans. While there is freedom in everlasting life, there's also restriction from the sun, a whole world that a vampire cannot experience. Eventually, it would make sense that boredom would set in, and once you've seen it all, the prevailing desire is to see something new. Perhaps he's living vicariously through their own undying yet inevitably futile will to live and persevere. But what it comes down to is Helsing the original isn't an anime to watch with a super analytical eye, but it certainly hints at the idea of life being chaos. I mean, look at what we're living through now. Who would have imagined? Like really, did anyone truly see 2020 coming? This is true chaos. Words flying at you from talking heads every day, videos of atrocity, people in the streets, explosions, disease, not knowing who or what to believe at any given point, ramen noodle filters. But we're here and this is it, and we have no idea what's around the bend no longer is life quite so simple. So if there is something to be gleaned from what is now considered an out-of-date anime, it's to never give up. No matter what obstacle you face, perseverance in the face of adversity builds a better body, more weathered, more sturdy, more experienced and capable. Victory is simply refusing to lose sometimes. The best revenge sometimes is simple survival. And also you got guns with freaking magic bullets, splat, zombie head, bam, 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 Helsing full of holes, kick a dude, fist through the chest, laugh in the face of danger, Oh no, vampire girls hurt. Super vampire. Bah, psh, slap. Psh, shazammy. It's a cool show. Go watch it. Hey everybody, Mike here. Just wanted to send out a very special shout out to our lucky patron of the week, Spider-Man. And of course, our Super Saiyan God of the Week, the sushiest of sushi, and our top patron, Alpha Sigma. Thank you all so much for your support. Make sure to check us out on social media. Subscribe if you like what you saw, and watch some more of our videos. And I will see you next week, my friends. Thank you so much. Goodbye.